in my six years, feels like longer, uh, six years serving as chair of the anthropology department, I've been honored to work with many remarkable colleagues, phenomenal students, and distinguished alumni. A particularly rewarding part of my job as department chair has been in connecting with our alumni who have changed the world in important and unexpected ways. Today's commencement speaker is a perfect example of the critical impact that anthropologists can have on the world, both within and outside of academia. Almost exactly 10 years ago today, our 2023 commencement speaker, Christopher Cree Engelke, graduated from UCLA with a PhD in linguistic anthropology. A native Wisconsinite, Cree came to UCLA in the fall of 2005 after receiving a BA, magna cum laude, and MA with distinction from Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. I was really fortunate to meet Cree the following ap academic year, in the fall of 2006, the year I first took up my position as a fairly young assistant professor in the department. Sharing a number of overlapping interests, I eventually had the opportunity to work closely with Cree as a member of his dissertation committee. In that capacity, I supervised one of his three qualifying exams. Uh, in this case, it was an exam that explored the concept of embodiment in phenomenological and linguistic anthropology. And I ultimately helped to evaluate his brilliant dissertation, which deploys linguistic anthropological methods and phenomenological anthropological theory to examine the ways that non-speaking people use augmentative communication technologies in their everyday lives. During that time, I also discovered many, many fascinating things about Cree. First, I was heartened to learn that Cree was like me, I'm a Canadian, so this, the next thing's gonna totally make sense, um, was like me, an avid ice hockey fan. I also learned that very much unlike me, however, he was an accomplished mountain climber, mountain biker, and golfer. Perhaps the most important thing I learned about Cree, however, is that he's full of surprises, including the fact that while writing up his dissertation, he was cast to play the role of a businessman in our very own Paul Connor's short film, The Darkest Game. While IMDB claims Cree is known for this captivating performance, what he's truly known for these days are his impressive accomplishments since receiving his PhD. Accomplishments that include him pursuing and receiving an MBA from the University of Wisconsin Business School. Currently, the vice president in charge of research and development for Ultratech Inc., a technology company that specializes in creating products for people with disabilities Cree drew directly from his training and the skills he developed as an anthropologist to create several new assistive communicative technologies for people with hearing, speech, and movement disabilities. These innovative technologies include a braille caption telephone for people who are deaf blind, a text output device for people with locked in syndrome, and a speech to text system that has revolutionized the field of real time closed captioning. His prominence within the field has also led Cree to working regularly with government and non-government agencies to develop quality and testing guidelines for assistive technology, as well as recently serving as an invited expert to the United Nations International Telecommunications Union in Geneva, Switzerland. While there's so much more I could say about Cree's innovative spirit, his generosity, and his many incredible accomplishments, I think it's time to get him up here to the podium so you can experience him firsthand for yourselves. So please help me to give a very warm and proud welcome to the ever rueful and ironically twinkling Christopher Cree Engelke, our 2023 Department of Anthropology speaker. Wow. Thank you, Jason. 
I wasn't quite ready for all of that, but I got it all. So good morning, everybody. First, let me, uh, let me start by welcoming the parents and the families of the graduating class. I can feel the relief, the excitement, the pride, the gratitude, the relief, the anticipation, <laughs> the relief that you're all feeling right now. As a proud parent of two exceptional daughters, I can only imagine the sacrifices that you guys have all made to get here and the tremendously well-earned sense of fulfillment that watching your children go through this has brought you. So congratulations to you all. The heartiest congratulations, however, go out to you, the graduating class of 2023. I'm honored and I'm humbled to be here today as your commencement speaker. Getting a chance to speak today is, it is really this, it's the stuff of dreams for me. Although if I'm being completely honest in my dream, I'm, I'm usually unprepared. I'm actually standing here in just my underwear and I found out that I have a test I still have to take. So it's, it's actually not as great a dream as you'd think. Um, thankfully for all of us, however, I've got this fancy robe and notes and, and Jason told me backstage that uh, I've got an extension on the final, so it's cool. Um, all kidding aside, I'm extremely privileged to be here to call UCLA my alma mater and to consider each of you my fellow alumni. I'm also reminded of my own graduation here almost exactly 10 years ago today. The weather was just like this, extremely pleasant in the shade, but just brutally uncomfortable in the sun. So I'll, I'll try to make this quick. The air, it smelled like jasmine and eucalyptus and everybody's mother's great perfumes. And it was all kind of mixing together with the pomps and circumstance that was on repeat in my head. And I remember all of that, but what I really remember were people coming up to me and asking, what are you gonna do with your anthropology degree? What are you gonna do with that? Even, even people who graduated with me in anthropology would ask, what are you gonna do with that? I'll tell you what I do, did with that. I left. Um, let us say, I, I left the field of anthropology, and as Jason said, I began a career designing assistive technologies for people with disabilities. And I use those little bunny rabbit scare quotes because anthropology isn't a professional development career like engineering or bio or even business or things like that. And so it's very rare for people to get an engineering or uh, an anthropology degree and then to go on and call themselves an anthropologist. Um, in fact, we don't really wear our anthropologist name tags any more than we wear our pith helmets and, and head to toe khakis or we used to call it the archeologist tuxedo. I don't know if you guys still, anyway. Um, but this lack of visibility should be no indication of our pride in the field or the usefulness of our studies. In fact, I would suggest it's, it's exactly the opposite. The 10 years that I've spent designing products for people with disabilities have been tremendously rewarding, and anthropology has sat at the core of each of those projects. As Jason said, I, I started my PhD program here in 2005. I studied how able-bodied designers could build products for people with disabilities, uh, how they measured and defined an ability. Um, I especially liked watching as these exceptionally intelligent people would simulate disabilities on themselves. They would put on eye shades and pretend to be blind or earplugs and, and simulate being deaf. And they used these definitions and these experiences uh, to, help them, to help guide them as they built new things. But the danger in all of this is that many of these designers only experienced the limits of a temporarily disabled body. And they, they bumped up against these culturally idealized norms. Many of them never came to see the complete person that their products would be used by, or the world that that audience would encounter in their everyday life. And that's where I first saw the real power of anthropology. Since then, I've seen it again and again and again and again. I see it when I see products that are designed for the designer but neglect the intended user, tools that work in the lab but fail in the world. And I've seen way too many tests that, that are done on people who look and walk and talk like me, but they neglect the, the, the diversity and the background and the abilities and the goals of all people to whom they're generalized. You see, we can all imagine what it would be like to be someone else but only to a certain extent and only in certain ways. And beyond those limits, you need to take part in the world 
that those other people inhabit, or, your, or their experiences will always be outside your grasp. And this is why anthropologists developed our own tools and methods. We listen, and we record, and we measure, but above all, we participate in other people's mundane lives. Because we understand that full humanity will never be reduced to the images that we conjure from our armchairs, and it will never be re uh, revealed in the algorithms that we produce in our spreadsheets. Now here's the kicker. In the real world, it's not just a place where you can write about your skills and your insights. It's also a place where you can create new things. New things that will help people. New things that will solve problems, improve lives, and foster cooperation and harmony. In my career, I've worked on phones for people who cannot hear, text for people who cannot see, and voices for people who cannot talk. My anthropology education sat at the center of each of those projects. It pulled me out of my own experiences and expectations and forced me to take seriously the concerns of the people who would ultimately use them. And you, too, have the power to create new things. You have this power because you've developed a unique mindset, a mindset that will help you empathize with others, be they producers or consumers, donors or recipients, the powerful or the powerless. A mindset that will help you to ask the right questions, the right questions that will ultimately lead to products that are human-centered and socially responsible. You have the ability to see the person, the people, and not just the norms and ideals. And this, graduates, this is the value of your degree. The tools to understand people the way that they approach the world. The meaning and the value and the connection to the universe that for them is so obvious as to be taken for granted. But also an ability to step back from that and to take a step back from this taken for granted and see how those details fit into larger cultural systems. So as you go forth from here, I urge you to remember that just as your power comes from understanding others, so too do you have a duty to use your tools and techniques for other people. Remember that as members of a society, doing well means that we do good. And while it is up to each of you as to how you will apply your education, and what you will ultimately make of this world, my hope is that this is how you will answer that fateful question of what are you going to do with that? Namely, you'll take seriously the diversity of experiences and use these to understand the worlds that people live out their everyday lives. You will create, adapt, and make in ways that will serve so many more people than just yourselves. That you'll be keen observers of the human condition, not keen ignorers of it. Now finally, in a few minutes, you're gonna walk across this stage and we're all gonna clap, presumably. <laughs> and as you hear us clapping, I want you to remember, we're not just clapping for what you've just accomplished. We're clapping for what you're going to do. Congratulations, class of 2023.